Hi and welcome to this episode which will be about depth of field and how we use it. Some claims that you should never shoot wide open, others love it. So what's the point of it and what's the meaning if we do one or the other? Well, let's dig into that in this episode. Let's get started. Before we really get started, be sure to sign up for my newsletter about workshops, tips on photography and of course subscribe to the channel so you get a notification each time there is a new video. I have a tendency to, for periods, loving shooting wide open and with the Leica Sumilux lens here it goes up to an aperture of 1.4 which means it lets in a lot of light and you have to adjust that for higher shutter speed and stopping the ISO, the ISO down, so you do not overexpose the pictures. When shooting with a lens wide open, you get a lot of light in, but you also narrow down the depth of field, which gives you a really nice smooth background out of focus if you're close enough to your subject or using a 50 millimeter lens or a little bit higher, for example. As soon as you switch to a 35 or 28 millimeter, you will not have the same effect unless you go really close up to your subject. The benefit of having an area out of focus, having a small or narrow depth of field is you have all the attention on the subject. It could be a portrait. It can be street photography where you want to wash out what is behind so it doesn't bend that sharp in the picture, maybe disturbing lines or something like that that ruins the composition. It is still necessary to make a really good composition. And if you hear something here, it's my cat, Daisy, meowing. She wants all the attention all the time. She wants to be in focus. Uh, so it's about what you want to be in focus and what not. You can also step your aperture up to like 5.6 and 8, and then you get a rich depth of field, which means the subject you have in focus will be sharp, what is behind and in the foreground might be sharp and again it's relying on the lens you have on your camera. As soon as you have a wide angle lens, more will seem sharp far further away and closer to the camera and as soon as you go up to like 50 millimeter and especially up to 90 millimeter or above, then this will decrease a bit but still having some sharpness at the out of focus areas and not what you focus on. And when we talk about focus, we talk about where you set your focus point and not what is blurred because of camera shake or something like that. So everything is about how much do you want to be sharp in your picture. The higher the number on the camera, the more will be sharp. The lower the number on the aperture setting here, the less will be sharp. So having something out of focus is really good for portraits where you want to have all the attention on the subject, on the face. It will look good for portraits, it will look good for wedding photography, but as soon as you have something where you want to interact with what's behind your main subject or bigger landscape port, uh, modes or something like that, then you might want to have a richer depth of field. Some claim that you should never shoot wide open and using the out of focus the depth of field as a tool to hide what is behind the subject and it should be easier which i think is completely wrong it's just another tool in the toolbox so if you want that softness in your picture where things are a little blurred out in the background but you can still recognize it then shoot at 1.4 if it's possible or 2.8 and then it depends on your composition and how close you are at things. If you want to have everything sharp, like in a scenery, where you want people to interact in the scene with buildings or in between people, then you probably want to shoot with a higher aperture like 8 or 
even 16 to get that rich depth of field. That means you have to be very careful about how you place the objects in your composition because everything will be sharp, it has to balance and there have to be a meaning with bringing that in. So leave out what you do not want in the frame and focus on what is important. Shooting wide open gives you a kind of different mood, you could say, than shooting with a deep depth of field. So it's two uh, completely different kinds of expressions. And where some photographers always shoot with one or the other and never mix them, I use what I think is appropriate for that shooting. So it very much depends on my objective of the shooting, what I'm focusing on, what I want to include and exclude in my picture. So for everything that is portrait, or I want that soft, tender feeling, a little dreamy feeling, I shoot wide open so I get a narrow depth of field, but I also have to be very precise in my focusing. So with the Leica here, Leica M and a Sumilux 1.4 aperture means I will have a very narrow depth of field and the closer I get to the subject, the more will be out of focus and I really have to hit it. And the risk of not hitting focus is not enormous, <laughs> but of course bigger than if I shoot with a wider open, with a higher number on my aperture, so I get a richer depth of field. So what's in front of the subject and a little behind will still be in focus. All of this changes, the closer you get to the object, the narrower the focus of depth will be, the further you are away, the more it will seem in actual focus. And besides the pictures I will show you here, I will just make a little uh, test by switching the camera, which have a 35mm lens on it right now, to a 50mm, and then the lens is now a 50mm, and it's the same quality as the Leica lens here, it goes down to 1.4. So let's try to go up to 5.6, and now this is how it looks. And again, take in consideration, it depends on how far away I am from the lens and far, how far away the background is from the lens. So let's step up to 16, which means now you will feel that I'm in focus from here, the background is focus. When I come closer to you, you will still have something in focus in the background. And when I swap it back to 1.4, full open exposure, having only a very narrow depth of field. And that changes when I lean forward to the camera and backwards because it also begins to alter how the background looks when I'm here or here. Technically, in the lens, there are a circle of blades that can open up or narrow down how much light comes in. And you will be able to see that. So when I open and close the lens here, now there's a very narrow spot where the light can come in. And this makes everything more sharp because you simply narrow in the vision and therefore everything will be sharp like you're looking to a roll of toilet paper or something or do this with your hand and you will keep everything sharp front and back. And when you open up and widen up the lens, then you will have less focus in the background and the foreground, depending on where you are focusing. So in the end, it's about an expression. It's not about a rule. It's not something religious that you can only shoot in this style or this style, and then you are put in a box like you are a photographer always shooting wide open, which I tend to do a lot because I like the softness it brings to my pictures. But in all occasions, I'm photographing with a opening at eight or 16 to get that rich depth of field. It all depends on the expression I want in that situation. There are no rules in photography. You can do what you like to do. You can express yourself with your camera. You can select the style you want. And if you have an idea that you want to shoot wide open all the time, then do it. Practice it, get used to it, see where the benefits are and learn where the failures are. Because when you shoot wide open and, and very narrow depths of field, you are 
likely to miss some of the, your shots, but so it is, give and take. When it is there, it looks beautiful. With an aperture about 8 or 16, you will get that rich depth of field and you will include everything in the picture. Therefore, you have to be very careful with the composition, much more careful than when you shoot wide open. So it could sound like it's an easy task to exclude things and be sloppy with your composition if you shoot wide open so you get that narrow depth of field, a big out of focus area. But it isn't so because it is still very important what you include in the picture. It can be light and shadows and different objects. You will still recognize them. They will be looking more smooth and you will be able to distance them from your main subject and attract the focus of the viewer towards the main subject, which will be in focus and everything else blurred out. When you use a aperture at eight and rich depths of field, it means you have to look more for your composition. The lines behind will be sharp. So if you have something that disturbs, it will really disturb. And therefore it demands a different thoughtfulness about the composition. But it's not that I find one is more easy than the other because where it is difficult to compose a picture where the lines are beautiful, sharp all the way around and frame the subject I want, then it is as difficult to nail the focus if you shoot wide open and low depths of field, especially with a Leica M here, which is which is a manual focus system. But even with automatic focus, it can be difficult to nail it because you have to be sure that it is the eye that is sharp or the person behind another person that is sharp. And there, the automatic focus system often will select the one in front and not in the back. So manual focus will be the best way to nail in certain situ situations, the object you want to be in focus. When you are shooting from the hip, not literally speaking necessarily, but when you are street shooting and want to be sure an action is uh, captured and in focus, I would recommend like 4, 5.6 or 8 stops and then you will have a richer depth of field and even if you have your focus a little in front of the subject or a little behind, it will still be what's important that is sharp, but you will also have sharpness on the background and what else is in the foreground. So everything is give and take. And of course, as soon as you begin to move around with the aperture, you have to adjust your shutter speed and your ISO settings. What I usually do is that I take one of the settings of the exposure triangle, the ISO, the shutter speed or the aperture as my most important setting. And most important for me is to control the depth of field. Therefore, I focus on having either wide open or something in the middle. Then I adjust my shutter speed to that. And if I cannot set the shutter speed fast enough, I have to dial up the ISO a bit. So the ISO is at the smallest step on my scale of important settings on my camera. So aperture is the most important because that controls the depth of field. Then the shutter speed is secondly most important to be able to capture it without shaking the camera and getting light enough in the camera or maybe even stop down so it don't, don't do not get too much light in there. And then the ISO settings as the last thing, because ISO in most modern cameras today is less important than the shutter speed and the aperture. You will have to shoot at really high ISOs to get noise that you will recognize on a picture. That's the least thing to worry about. On the old M9 here, uh, the ISO is different. It begins to get noise around 800 at modern cameras today, that is not anything to worry about unless you shoot at pitch black night. So the aperture controls the depth of field and the shutter speed and the ISO is just to supporting you are being able to shoot at that. I have no idea why some people are very uh, rigid about it is a no-go to shoot wide open. So 
why not? It's just another way of expressing yourself using your camera as a tool. Lenses will go and have different kinds of out of focus qualities. The Sumilux here have a very nice and soft bouquet, which is the out of focus area. And the depth of field determines and the distance between your main object and the background determines how it will look at the end. But the quality of the lens also have something to say here. Uh, a lot of the Leica and I find the Sony lenses as well do a really good job of having that out of focus area looking smooth, nice and not uh, busy like the old 35mm version 2 I think of the Voigtland lenses fitting the Leica M system is a little bit too busy. They are too sharp in uh, their way of rendering the image and the details where the Sumilux here is much softer and all possible old lenses will have different qualities. And Leica have even made a new 50mm lens version that is even smoother with a more rounded out of focus highlight. This is the quality of the lenses and also when you shoot them at aperture 8 or 16 even, it has something to say the quality of the lens how well the image is reproduced. Poor lenses, I would avoid shoot wide open, stop down one or one and a half stop, and also do not shoot them narrow really hard down to, like in this case, the lens can go to an aperture of 16 stopping down the light, but on lenses that are not that high quality, I would not go as far as that, go a little lower. And the reason for that is, that at the edges, at the limits of the lens, they can have a little bit of distortion. It can have a little bit of out of focus, and especially in the corners, there can be some small failures when you kind of press your lens to deliver quality at the edges of what it is capable of. I have never seen any problems with the Sumilux lens here. It is beautiful, wide open, or narrow, really hard down. The thing is, when you begin to shoot at 5.6, which is the in-between, the middle setting, you will have decent depths on both the front and at the back of the subject. You will have a rich depth of field that is pleasing to look at. When you narrow it down to 1.4, it is still pleasing to look at, but you have that very shallow depth of field and you can't miss the focus. It will be very obvious. And then, when you move up to 11 or 16 on your aperture, you will have a different problem that is lens dirt. If you have dust or anything on the lens and you shoot up against the light, it will be really visible. You can, of course, help some of that out in the Lightroom or Capture One, clone those small dots away, but it's a tedious job to do. And I never shoot that far open. I prefer to have it at 8, aperture 8, because then I get a lot of depth of field and uh, rich depth of field and can be sure that I have focus on the subjects I'm looking at. And if I want to drag things of interest in the foreground and background into my composition, they will still be relatively sharp, depending on how close I am to them. The closer I get, the more things in front and back will be out of focus. The further away or the bigger the picture, the less that will be a subject that matters. If you shoot wide open and make big pictures where you want to compose a lot of things, then you will get that feeling of the picture being a little unsharp. Although it isn't, you may nail the people in focus that should be in focus, but you can also risk that you get a feeling of what's around in the background is unsharp. Sometimes I like to shoot really wide open, even on moving subjects on the street. So I have the person in focus, but what's around more or less out of focus to drag the attention to the object I want the viewer to focus on. So that's simply a tool. At all times, I like to shoot with the aperture narrowed down to 5.6 or 8 on even 11 in some cases where I want to incorporate everything in the picture and get it as sharp as possible. But in the end, it's just a matter of style and taste and what you want to use in your picture.
what expression you want, but there's no pros, there's no against doing one or the other. Everything works, it's just a tool in the toolbox. So this is something I teach in the street photography workshops I do. We look at different ways of using our lenses, set them right so we get one or the other expression, and then we look at how we can compose pictures with one or the other settings, with a rich depth of field or a narrow depth of field, and what impact that does to the image when we are in the street, because it's in the street, it's in the situation, we have to make our decision how we want our expression. This is not something you can add after. Yes, you can use AI to blur out the background, but that is cheating, that is not photography. So make your decision in the field and train your eye and especially use the same camera a lot so it's easy to adjust the settings quickly and you know you will hit the right exposure and get the right expression that you're aiming for with your camera. So that was a little bit about depth of field. Be sure to sign up for newsletters and sign up for the channel here so you get a new video next time and thank you for watching.